So first up, we've got Kim of Korea, who we haven't seen yet because in the previous round, he got a walkover against Alex Sulia of Tanzania. Plenty of experience, though, in elite international competition. This is his third World Championships. He's had two Asian Championships under his belt as well. That's Gurlan Congo of Ecuador. We did see him. He ran out a split decision 4-1 winner against the huge Alexei Zavatin of Moldova in his first fight. He had to work hard. He was giving away an unbelievable amount of size, really. But he's got good feet. He's nimble. He is pretty small for a super heavyweight. You would have to say that, but, but he worked well. 20 years old. Kim, 35 these days. So a big age gap between the pair of them. And now, please welcome in the blue corner of the ring, the boxer representing the Democratic Republic of Congo, Christopher Luteke. So there goes the bell into the first round. Kim of Korea setting up in the southpaw stance there in the red. Congo of Ecuador in the blue, orthodox. Quite different physically, these two. Very, very solid look about Kim. Congo, as I said, for a super heavyweight, is agile. He's in good, good shape. You can see that there. Nothing on him, really, for someone in this top division. Kim just holding the center of the ring there, looking to pounce when he sees an opening. Congo quite circumspect in the opening stages here. down nothing really landed just yet leads off with a big hook there Kim extravagant step there from Congo then set the right hand down the middle landed that but Kim came back with a, a left straight down the center in that kind of situation where they're in that sort of clinch Kim needs to try and get on top of Congo a bit just show him who's stronger, grab him and see if he can walk him back to the ropes and just throw him around a bit, as much as the referee will allow anyway. One, two to the body there from the Korean. It's the final minute. Left hand only kind of half got through there, and both of them just raising their gloves for no particular reason. Left hand, big left hand up from the waist, and I think that might just have clipped the top of the head there of Congo. The, the bigger, cleaner punches have come from Kim in this round so far. Just finding Congo on the way in. Congo's jabbing the gloves. He's got to keep him turning and moving that's what he did well against Kateev. Kateev was was a huge opponent physically different to Kim tall and just massive and he kept him turning kept him moving came in with that jab from the outside got back out again now Kim has got much quicker hands but he isn't the fastest on his feet you wouldn't say really? 
if you keep him turning, that is. Congo gets it with four out of the five judges there. From what I saw, the punches that really landed there came from the red corner, but Congo's got a, a healthy lead at the end of that first round. Device just straying onto the canvas there. The referee kicks it out. So it's the second round. Kim needs this round now. 4 1 down after the first. down with the left hand there Kim left that time didn't quite get through jab just falling short there from Congo and again almost coming together on the inside there as they both came forward. Referee warning both of them about making contact around the back of the head. That was purely because they, they came in together as they were swinging and there was no, no room really to punch effectively and so probably a couple did stray around the back there. Nice one too there from Congo. Good distance on that. Kim with his one too but didn't didn't make contact with that one. The gloves for Congo did their job. Looks for the uppercut. Fighter from Ecuador and Kim steps in with that long left hand again. That's what he looks to throw. Most of the time. Does it again there. The weight just came forward a little bit over the top of the front foot and he lunged in slightly. Better balance about the second one. Congo, I think, just sunk into the ropes and managed to stay out of the way of it. Congo with a long right hand. He's got that habit of raising that right glove to claim the to claim the scoring blow which is a hangover really from the computer point scoring days you see fighters do that often back down good right hand on the move there from Congo Kim raises his glove as he goes back to the corner I thought that was I thought that was a Congo round this time around. He picked his punches pretty well, stayed out of the way of, of Kim for the most part. Split scoring, the Indian judge going for Kim, the other four going for Congo. We've got three scores of 20 points to 18 in favour of Congo and two of 19 apiece. So he's in control of this one. And Kim will need 10 eights in this in this final round to turn this around. If he manages to land something big, you never know. You never know at super heavyweight. It really can turn around in a split second. We say that about about boxing generally, and and of course it is true of 
any fight, but particularly in this division. You do really just need to land one and everything can change. And that's what he's got to do here, Kim. Kim of career in red, Congo, Ecuador in the blue. This Kim's first fight of the tournament after a walkover against Alex Saul of Tanzania in the previous round. Congo, meanwhile, got a win over the Man Mountain, Alexei Zamatin of Moldova. Nice left hand off the back foot there from from Congo. Just gave that ground. Clipped Kim on the way in. Front foot just seemed to slip a bit there as he threw the right hand. Congo, Kim with the one, two, the left hand. Just sunk into the midriff, possibly landed. A minute gone in round three just stooping into the jab almost there the fighter in red and Congo happy to use the outside of the ring here as he has been at regular intervals in this one so far that big left hand Kim but he's not really got that close to landing it in this fight looks to try and shoot it down the center which isn't something he, he generally does usually it comes winging in from wide he puts plenty behind it if he did catch you with it then it would be a serious problem but Congo's got good feet good reactions defensively sound and he's managed to stay back out of the way he's He's not taking any risks in this in this final round, Congo. That was a, a decent right hand from him though there. I think the left might have got through just before that from Kim. He knows that, or he will know from the coaching staff that, that he's in control of this one on the cards and just needs to keep doing what he's doing really. Doesn't need to take any particular risks. So there goes the final bell. Kim feels that he's got it. Unfortunately for him, he hasn't. I thought he won the first round, the, the fighter in round. I thought Congo won the second round. The third round, Congo wasn't all that busy. I think there was a reason for that. I think it's because he didn't want to take any risks. I think he might have boxed that third round differently if he needed to go out and win it. So it's difficult to to come to any kind of firm opinion on that if if that makes sense but we know that Congo had a two-point lead with three of the judges going into the third and final round and there's there's no way that Kim's got got 10 eights in that final round so it's the fighter in the blue corner who is going to go through Blue corner gets it, and two of the judges going Kim's way in that final round, so it's 4-1. One. one score of 30 points to 27. Two scores of 30 points to 27 in his favour. 229-28, 129-28 in favour of Kim, which came from Morocco. And as I said, from, from my point of view, I thought it was one each going into the into the final round. I thought the final round was close, but I think the final round could have been different if Congo had had to go out there and, and win it. So I don't have any problem with the with the identity of the of the winner there. That's our first fight at super heavyweight.